Happy Thursday morning, day five. It's my brother-in-law, uh, Charlie Adams' birthday today. So, happy birthday, Charlie. I know you're not going to see this, but if you do, happy birthday. So, here we go. Luke chapter five. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, and the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners and other in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. And that's what we're supposed to do as disciples of Christ, is fish for people. And But you have to do it respectfully. Um, you know, just say, you know, if, if, you're, if you're wondering about this, um, just look into it. That's all I'm asking. All right? Jesus heals a man with leprosy. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so the crowds of the people came near him to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus, Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. One day Jesus was teaching and, teaching, and Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Okay, so... Um, the crew that you're running with needs to have the faith that these people did because this guy's paralyzed and they say, hey, we'll take him and we're going to do whatever we can to get him healed. And their faith was so strong that they lowered, they dug a hole in the roof and they lowered him down right in front of Jesus. That is a crew to stand by. And I got, I got a couple guys uh, that, are, that would do that. I really think they would. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Okay, so there's a lot of people that were like, hey, you know, if I could just see God do a miracle, um, I would believe. And in the beginning, he was doing miracles. And uh, they didn't believe. In fact, they hated him. And I'm going to, like, 
you know, spoiler alert, but they're going to kill him. He did nothing wrong ever. Only helped, only loved, only healed. They hated him and they killed him. So don't give me the malarkey about like, if I could just see a miracle from God, I would believe. No, you need to believe without seeing that miracle. Jesus calls Levi and eats with sinners. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector, by, collector sorry, saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth, booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, "Why do you eat and drink with tax and tax collectors and sinners?" Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus questioned about fasting. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days, they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins, and no one, after drinking old wine, wants the new. For they say the old is better. Keep your eyes on the cross. I'm pulling for you. Remember, we're all in this together. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Have a great day.